Oh, and of course, the small but mighty iPad Mini. The Mini? This is the strongest iPad lineup we've ever had. It's the best in the industry say that every by year. far. I think that's With true. With these new iPads and the introduction of the powerful right, we're talk inboard about chip, the big upgrades to Final Cut Pro and Logic Pro. For they were iPads, impressive. They were impressive. Along with the new Apple Pencil All right, he's just Pro, recapping the new stuff. Magic Keyboard. It truly is I'll the turn biggest it day for iPad since its introduction. Yes, it is. Uh, we'll let him talk. From consumers Go ahead and to talk, pros, Tim. Let's iPad talk. iPad enables people to take their ideas, their work, and their creativity to new heights. We can't wait to see what users this do with basic. these incredible it's the new iPads. <sighs> and we look forward to seeing you next month at WWDC, oh, forgot. where we'll talk about the future of our platforms and share some exciting details about what's to come. iPad OS, baby. Thank you for joining us. You're welcome, Tim. Have a great day. Yeah, you do the same. All right, folks, let's chat a little bit. Hit me up in the comments. So Apple just wrapped up their iPad event. They refreshed almost everything, not the iPad mini, not the iPad but the most important iPads, right? You got your iPad Air and your iPad Pro. We're going to talk about it. Hit the like button, subscribe, guys. If you're on X, go ahead and follow. Um, let's dive into this. So they started off with talking about Apple Vision Pro. That's obviously still on people's minds as it's the biggest release from Apple in terms of new technology. But the iPad is still going strong. I've said this many times that I hoped that Apple would truly bring the iPad closer to the Mac. And that's what they did today. I'm so thankful that, that's, that they're thinking in that same realm because the iPad truly is the most versatile device Apple's ever created. And not only is it something that they've created, it's best in class. Like no other tablet uh, really competes with what the iPad can do. So they talked about Apple Vision first, and then they talked about the iPad Air. Now, the iPad Air was truly impressive. Um, upgrading it to an up to 13-inch display is monster, okay? We'll get to why it's a little disappointing, but we'll talk about that in a second. Um, so the iPad Air has the 13-inch display now and the 11-inch display. Uh, it's got the new M2 chip, so they brought it up to the power of the M2, which is super impressive, I think, uh, for people who use the iPad Air. But as we saw with those prices, people are going to be salivating at this new iPad Pro, so it's going to be really hard for them to just not notch up and get that at least base model smaller um, iPad Pro. But Apple always does this great thing where they, well, great for them, not great for the customer, where they stagger the prices so that the best 11-inch iPad, the Air, is right up against, uh, excuse me, the best 13-inch Air, you're so close you might as well get the smaller iPad Pro. You know, and then you get all those features. Now, the cool thing about the iPad Pro is that it gets the new Apple Pencil, and we'll talk about that more in detail. But that's also available on the Air. So Apple likes playing real tight. They, they think a lot about the lineup of the products that they're going to be releasing, and they make it so you get in at such a cheap price, but then for a small upgrade, a small upgrade here, next thing you know, you're getting the 13-inch the, the iPad Pro. Now, this is where I get into what I was a little bit disappointed about. What's going on, X? Yeah, make sure you... Uh, make sure you follow if you're listening on X, guys. Hit the like button, subscribe if you're on YouTube. So this is where I get a little disappointed with the iPad Pro. When we hear that the iPad Air is getting a screen update upgrade from the eleven uh, to the eleven and thirteen inch versions, right? Automatically, my mind is going, "Okay, we're getting a fourteen inch iPad Pro, right?" Because the Pro has to be just at least a little bit better than the Air in every way. It has to be, otherwise. You know, there are going to be benefits to, there There have got to be benefits to going pro, if you know what I'm saying. So I thought we were going to get a 14-inch, right? Even at the top end, it could be like a 12-inch and a 14-inch. You know how Apple does like a 2-inch increase? Like with the MacBook Pro, you get the 14 and the 16-inch. With the Air, you get the 11 and the 13-inch. So it makes natural sense for the iPad Pro to get a 12-inch as the smallest version because the Previously, the biggest version was a 12.9 with the Pro. So they should do the smallest version as the 12 and then go up to a 14. It makes perfect sense, but they decided not to do that. Anyway, I'm not going to cry and complain about that because the rest of the iPad Pro was actually very, very impressive. Now, I've talked about in previous videos why, at the end of the day, the ultimate thing holding back the iPad Pro is software. As, as long as the iPad is still on iPad OS and doesn't transform into something that can really hit with the Mac, 
we'll we'll talk about that. They did some things with software. Um, it's always going to be held back. But let's talk about hardware first, and then we'll talk about some of the software, which did truly receive an upgrade. Uh, but we'll find out more about that at WWDC, clearly. Um, they're hinting at that. You don't give the iPad Pro all this power without looking forward to doing something bigger. This was actually my first viral video that I made um, back in 2021 when they released the M1 iPad Pro. I said, guys, they're going in the direction of the Mac with the iPad. And that video ended up going viral. It's the same pattern, guys. Apple hasn't changed their way of thinking here. They're putting the M4, they're, they're not just putting the M4 chip in the iPad Pro, they are introducing the M4 chip across the whole brand um, in the iPad. The iPad has long been the pioneer for new technologies. We see the new display technology for this new XDR display. Um, we've seen the, the language, the uh, design language change with the iPad. Remember, the 2018 iPad Pro basically informed all of the design language for Apple since then, and it still continues to do that. We're going to see thinner, lighter. Of course, that's where Apple wants to go. I would imagine the next iPhone is going to do that as well. Um, and all their devices are gonna just get thinner and look more like the iPad because it truly does innovate in that way. But the display, let's talk about that. So it's an XDR display. Um, let me pull up my screenshots that I took. Let me know what you think, by the way, in the comments. I'll be keeping an eye on the chat. Okay, so here are some of the things about this, this Pro iPad. So we get the Ultra Retina XDR that they're talking about now that has something called Tandem, uh, Tandem LED technology. It's an OLED display. Um, and basically what it's able to do is turn off and on individual pixels, uh, very cool voodoo type of tech stuff that's going to make it brighter. It's up to a thousand nits regular brightness and up to 1600 nits for HDR. So it's going to be no problem viewing HDR content in almost direct sunlight. Now, one thing that they didn't really harp on, but is there, you get Thunderbolt 4 on the iPad. Now, one thing additionally that was a little disappointing, especially since um, to be honest, folks, we're probably not going to see a new iPad for another two years. 2026 is going to be the next iPad Pro based on this. And I think they did enough upgrades to hold us for two years. But there are some things that I would have wished they would have added. Certainly, guys, they moved the camera from the portrait mode to landscape mode. So the camera is now fixed in the horizontal uh, orientation so what does that leave? It leaves a space for an additional Thunderbolt port. And they didn't do it. I'm like, come on. So we already have the one Thunderbolt port. You've got all this power in this iPad, the M4 chip. You've got the neural engine, right? That's what they said, 60 times more powerful than the M1. So it allows for all kinds of AI stuff. We'll talk about the AI stuff when we get to software. But it leaves room right there for your, your, your additional USB-C, your Thunderbolt. It didn't even have to be Thunderbolt. It didn't even have to be Thunderbolt. They could have put a USB-C there, and I would have been happy, right? It would allow us to maybe charge while plugging into an interface or uh, plug in a hard drive while charging. Like, any of the that combination of those things would have been so much better. But right now, you still are having your hands tied with iPad Pro because if you plug into charge, you can't run an SSD. Or you have to find some kind of great uh, dongle or whatever to allow both of those things to happen. Let's see. Uh, I'm kind of glad it was. I wasn't blown away. Oh, wait. Let me see. I'm, I'm trying to see this live chat. Let's see. Let's pull it up. Let's pull it up. I'm kind of glad I wasn't blown away by what was presented. I'll save the money. Blown away, um, hmm. that's that's a good comment there. Yeah, I would say it's just under blown away, though, for me personally. They did upgrade a lot of the things that I wanted. But I'll tell you what, um, you're, you're probably going to be blown away when WWDC rolls around. Because the upgrades that they're going to give in software, I think, are going to be really mind-blowing. To be honest, you have to always make the hardware step first. You can't make a whole bunch of software that's going to be incredible for a device that simply can't handle it. Now, do I think an M2 iPad Pro would have been able to handle some of these upgrades? Maybe, probably, but with the four times more power that this M4 chip has over the M2, you know they're setting it up. They're setting the stage for some significant software enhancements, and we'll get to those, but let's finish off with the hardware here. Um, so we've got the nano textured glass option, which I think is going to be incredible, but it kind of causes a bit of an issue. So with my iPad setup, which is actually what I'm streaming on now, iPad Pro, I've got a nano textured, nano textured, I've got like a, a, a matte finish uh, screen protector, which allows for a great uh, writing texture 
right, for the Apple Pencil, but it also gives some anti-glare, okay? And it also is more scratch resistant than if you had a glassy screen protector, okay? So it has a lot of benefits and I love the thing to death. Um, they've added nano textured glass now to the iPad Pro. So here's what's gonna happen. Do you need a screen protector? People are gonna to wanna to protect the surface from scratches. Even if it's the nano textured glass, you can't replace that. That's gonna be your whole iPad if that cracks or gets damaged. So now are you putting another, you wouldn't wanna put another matte finish screen protector on there because it's gonna decrease the screen quality at that point. It's not gonna be as clear and crisp. So then if you put a clear one on, it kind of undoes, undoes, undoes the nano textured effect because now you have this matte finish in the natural iPad if you get the nano texture, and then you put a glossy on top of that. So you're gonna be getting all that glare back, and so I'm confused about how to protect the iPad. Maybe you just go glossy like before, you say no with the nano textured glass, and you get that uh, that matte finish glass screen protector, which is what I use, it's fantastic. Um, cuts down on glare, makes for a great writing surface like I've said before. So they did the nano textured glass. We got the Thunderbolt 4. Unfortunately, we didn't get two USB-C ports or Thunderbolt ports. They upgraded the Magic Keyboard. Now, there are some serious upgrades to this. I don't use Magic Keyboard. I don't like it. I don't like that it is not, it doesn't give me a traditional form factor of like a MacBook, right? I have a great case. It's called a Doco case. I'll leave a link down in the description below. It basically makes the iPad like this. It's like this. I can put it in almost any orientation, but it magnetically attaches, so I can literally lift the screen right off of it, which is which is really great. The Magic Keyboard, not a big fan of, but they did make some really cool upgrades. First of all, you're getting an aluminum palm rest, so they're upgrading the uh, materials, and they even said it in the in the event that it's going to make it like. Uh, using a MacBook Pro. You're just getting that premium feeling. So I always love it when they upgrade materials. Uh, the Magic Keyboard also gets a function row now, so you'll be able to quick control things like brightness, your media controls, uh, probably do not disturb, volume controls and stuff like that. Uh, my Doco case already has a function key. You know what, should I pull it off? No, I'm not gonna do it, because it's acting as a, ah, I'm gonna show you, all right. I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna hold the iPad here, see? Um, so this is, I just detached it, but see, it already kind of looks like the MacBook Pro case. This screen, uh, this uh, trackpad is glass though too, which is pretty sick. It's backlit, which is nice, and it already has the function row, all right? So this is why it's my preference over the Magic Keyboard, which just doesn't do it for me. But I do like the, the premium upgrade in terms of materials. Moving on from that, you've already got ProMotion. I don't know why they put that as an upgrade. They already got 5G. Um, it already does ProRes, Face ID. It's got a new True Tone Flash, okay? So that's gonna help with document scanning. That seems like a very niche thing, but I, myself in particular, I actually use uh, the iPad for document scanning all the time and checks and stuff like that. Just scan them right in. So that'd be cool for me, I guess. Up to two terabytes of storage, no upgrade here, uh, but, we now have the Apple Pencil. So let's talk about that. The Apple Pencil has this new barrel roll feature. Where's my, where's my, I don't have it. So I can't show you, I don't know where it's at. Anyway, um, so you have like granular control over the Apple Pencil now, and you'll be able to do a lot with art. And so they showed off Procreate, obviously. They had the CEO of Procreate show everything that you could do. But guys, here's what's more exciting to me. The applications now, for other software like Final Cut, like DaVinci Resolve, like Logic. Why? Because we're now starting to have a mouse alternative. I've made several videos about wanting Apple to take the best of iPad OS, take the best of Mac OS, and merge them into basically Mac OS that is touch friendly. Now you may say, Chris, that's stupid, that's whack, why would anybody want to do that? Here's why. The Mac has already shown that it is a professional operating system. I still to this day do not believe that iOS or iPad OS is a professional operating system. The iPad Pro is a professional device. Best in class screen, um, best in class build materials, um, super powerful processor, especially now with the M4. But it doesn't run a professional operating system. And until it does that, it's not going to be seen as a real pro device. But if they're able to, to take the best of iPad OS and implement it into a special version of Mac OS for the iPad, um, that's going to be insane. And now, but the question was always, but it's not really made for a mouse. Like Mac OS is made for a mouse, a pointer. How are you going to deal with that 
with the iPad since everybody's got nubby pudgy fingers, right? Now with this new Apple Pencil Pro, things like haptic feedback, things like the barrel roll thing where it can finally understand where, where the Apple Pencil is oriented over the screen. This is basically better than a pointer because you now have contextual um, input with the Pencil Plus. Naturally, people are gonna write with a pencil more naturally, for lack of a better word, than they will on a mouse, okay? You can move your hand across the screen maybe faster than you can move a mouse across the screen. That may not be true. But I, there's so much more you can do with this pencil than you could do with a mouse. So uh, I'm super excited about that. What's crazy, folks, is you can actually order, in fact, let me pull up the Apple Store now because uh, it's probably going to get sold out pretty soon. And <laughs> I, I want to be able to get my hands on this. Uh, it comes in new colors, which is cool. The Air does as well as the Pro. Obviously, I'm concerned with the Pro. It comes in that new slate black. You know, that's going to be the color for me. Um, but what was I talking about? I was talking about the Apple Pencil as an input method. I think it's going to be better. Okay, let me check the chat. Make sure I'm not missing any chats here. Live chat. Yes, lots of updates on the iPad Pro. Yeah, excellent. So uh, I like your takes on tech. Thank you, Wolf. I, I try to, you know, I just try to keep it honest as best I can. I try to tell you guys, hey, look, I am an Apple fanboy, but it doesn't always mean I'm happy with Apple. And But I can honestly say that with this iPad, especially if we don't get an iPad Pro for another two years, it probably will be 2026 when we get the next one. That is satisfying. Okay, PVS has display. Yes, so that we talked about the display a little earlier in the stream. That's going to be a new, uh, they're not calling it mini LED. They're calling it a tandem LED display. So what that basically means is you're still getting all the best benefits of uh, being able to individually turn on and off pixels and things like that and represent colors kind of in a more vibrant way. But what it really does is it's optimized for the thinness of this iPad Pro. Here's something though. I think the thing's still made of aluminum, okay? And maybe people didn't catch on to this. If it's still made of aluminum, it's pure physics. The thinner you get, the more susceptible this thing is going to be to bending, okay? Ever heard of Bengate, right? We all remember Bengate, that was with an iPhone. So imagine what's gonna happen with an iPad as, guys, it did get bigger. It's not 12.9, it's a small upgrade, but 13 inches now. So it's 13 inches and even thinner. I just wanna warn people, don't be surprised if Ben Gate comes to the iPad Pro and with that display technology, I would hope that in addition to its all tandem goodness of OLED-ness, I would hope that it's extremely resistant to bending. Okay, that, that, would, be my, that would be my main concern with picking one of these things up. Uh, other than that, I think this thing is just going to scream. It's gonna be gorgeous. And it really is gonna be up to people implementing the proper software to make that great. And with that, I wanna segue now into the software. What kind of software is Apple trying to power this device with? But before I do that, let me take a look at the chat. Um, so I don't have to trade in my 2021 M1 iPad Pro uh, for pennies. Yeah, I mean, it's going to, the trade in value is probably not going to be too great with the M1, but thankfully they skipped the M3. So you're getting, and now if you were looking to upgrade, like I'm going to be upgrading, I didn't get the, the second gen iPad, you know, with the M2 or anything like that. I'm still rocking the M1, which is fantastic, but I'm going to need to be upgrading to this M4 because it's just, it's enough to upgrade for me. So I, I'm going to be trading in there. Uh, but let's talk about software. So they announced a few upgrades. Obviously, we're gonna see the biggest stuff for software at WWDC, which folks is just next month. So if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe, make sure you click the bell so you can stay up to date with this channel um, as I'll be doing the same thing I did today with this. We'll be watching it together, having fun, eating imaginary popcorn, and then we'll be talking about the event afterwards. Uh, but iPad OS is, is, is really gonna have to uh, put up or shut up, basically. If they do not bring it with the multi-display abilities, if they don't bring it with um, even better UI, if they don't bring it with better file management, people are gonna be like, look, it's just a more powerful paperweight. Because if, 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 if the software doesn't enable it to do what the hardware can do, we're never gonna see all that M4 power. We're never gonna see all that. Now, um, let's talk about Final Cut for a second. They, they showed something that was actually mind-blowing. 
Like, legitimately mind-blowing. With Apple M4 and its neural engine capabilities now, you will be able to literally, with 4K video, extract a person from the background with the press of a button. I don't think people, and I understand, not everybody is in the video. Traditionally, what you would have to do is get a green screen, right? So imagine like behind me was all just a green screen. This is not a green screen, by the way. This is actually my background. <laughs> kind of nice, huh? Uh, anyway, um, so traditionally, you'd have to use a green screen. And then the computer would understand what green is. And you couldn't wear green shirts or anything like that because the computer would have to cut you out of that. And if it, it confused green for not green... You would have problems, okay? So now in the future, with with kind of more AI-enabled software, um, we're able to cut things out. But it's always kind of not professional. Like, it's a little cheap and tacky looking, to be honest. What they showed, at least on the preview here at this event, it looked flawless. Like, literally, and again, it's the promotional material, so we'll have to test this out in the wild, but... It moved everything. And if it's anything like, if it's anything like Apple's, um, where you can go to your Photos app and just select something in a photo and it just understands what the subject is versus the background, if it's like that, but for video, that's going to be pretty impressive. Because I already know of a lot of YouTubers, some of your favorite YouTubers, who actually use that to make their thumbnails, to cut themselves right out of the frame just like this. They boop, and then it does the outline. And then they take them and put them on a the thumbnail. Uh, if they can, if we can do that for video now, that's going to be huge. And I could see it being used for even low budget uh, Hollywood, maybe indie films, maybe indie films. Um, I won't say all the way to Hollywood, but speaking of Hollywood, folks, let's talk a little bit about another feature that's on Final Cut Pro, and it's actually a separate app now. Final Cut Studio, I think, is what it's called, or Final Cut Camera. And it allows for up to four iPhones to be used to create a multi-angle live streaming uh, uh, editor, okay? Where you can cover multiple angles, obviously, and edit in real time right on the iPad Pro. Connected to a super fast, a blazing fast Samsung SSD. That is a game changer. Okay, and that all came through one software, Final Cut Pro. Well, technically it's two apps, but it's all in the house of Final Cut. I think this is going to be very impressive. I think it's going to be very useful um, for live productions. Everybody's doing a lot of live stuff now. Um, everybody wants to do multicam, even with pre-recorded stuff. They want to do multicam with podcasts blowing up and continuing to blow up. People want to have guests on and you usually have your main angle and then one angle for each person. But now you're going to have even an additional angle. Maybe if you got an audience or uh, receiving questions or you want to have one for your editor, right? You can do all that with an iPad and some iPhones, right? So that's going to be insane. And it's actually going to encourage collaboration because people will come together. Everybody's going to have their iPhone. Oh, yeah, use my iPhone. Oh, you can use my iPhone. And it really will just use it as a camera body. So uh, I think that's going to be really impressive. So Logic was a little less impressive. Um, and so we won't spend much time on it. But basically, uh, it's got a new drummer. How about it? No, I'm just kidding. Uh, so the drummer adds some additional performance. But don't right so you can uh add them to your whole jam session but in addition logic now allows they, they seem to be trying to emulate analog warmth okay this is if you're not into music this is major for the music industry okay the the best-selling interface for professionals right now is something called the uad apollo twin and to, to nerd out for just a second what makes it so special is that the hardware of it actually changes to mimic the hardware changes it's not a software emulation the hardware changes in order to uh, mimic actual analog gear that was used on some of your favorite albums from michael jackson to the beatles right so that's always been done with hardware at the best levels okay and then you have some pretty good software emulation but it's never been that crazy apple is claiming to be using ai now yeah, Allen Iverson is coming into the studio to make your software instruments sound analog warmth. Obviously not the real Allen Iverson. I'm talking about um, artificial intelligence. Okay, so let's keep going down. Uh, we talked about the specs with the True Tone ProMotion display. Uh, I, I don't know if this was with the last iPad. I have to double check my stats, but it's now a 10 hertz to 120 hertz refresh rate. 
I wasn't aware that the iPad was going all the way down to 10 hertz at the lowest. That would be huge for battery saving. I would imagine with the bigger screen size, we're also getting a larger battery. We already know it has P3 color gamut. That's that's not new to the iPad at all. Um, so they're saying rocket ship. I'm, I'm actually looking at the website now. All that that I was doing before was off the dome, but I just want to make sure I'm being thorough. Um, and, and so I'm checking out the website. Again, this is available for order today. Um, you know what? Why don't we try something fun? I'm going to try and order one. Um, and let's see, let's see what the prices come out to, what kind of specs you can get. Let's start with the iPad Air, and then we'll finish with the iPad Pro. Uh, so let's click. It, it seems like the website's already updated, which usually it takes up to an hour after um, to get that. Here's what it looks like, right? So you see freed air. Oh, sorry, fresh air. <laughs> I was watching it in mirror because of the camera. Anyway, um, so fresh air. Uh, let's check it out. So it's got that new light, you know, cloud-looking blue. Uh, let's click the order now button for this air. Okay, so we've got an 11 inch model and we got the 13 inch model. Again, kind of disappointed that they didn't go bigger to a 14 inch model with the iPad Pro. But the air uh, starts at $599, which is, I think, a great price. $599 for a laptop, basically. Um, especially, excuse me, with all the cases that you can get, you can really make this into a solid laptop, an 11 inch laptop, but you have all the functionality of an iPad. Air. Um, I actually used an iPad Air in college my first semester, or maybe my second semester, and it was very powerful for that. 13-inch um, model starts at $799, so you're getting the full biggest screen possible at just $799. So you no longer have to go iPad Pro in order to get uh, the biggest screen. So let's finish up here. So uh, let's say let's say we're going for a 13-inch. Uh, what's the new color? They have the purple. The, let's go with this blue that they keep showing on the advertisements. You can get up to a terabyte of storage, which is pretty funky. That's pretty nice. Uh, but I think maybe, well, if you're a student, maybe you'll want the one terabyte, but that gets you all the way up to $12.99. You see how Apple does, folks? Do you see what they do to you? Do you see what they make you do? Because now you're at $12.99, and guess what? A 13-inch, $12.99, one terabyte iPad Air, now you're ready to just go iPad Pro. At that price, you might as well go iPad Pro. So let, let's bring it down to a 512. Now we're at 1099. Okay, this is going to be a Wi-Fi. Let's do a Wi-Fi only. Most people can tether from their iPhone. So let's go. Let, let's say we're a, a starving artist student right here trying to get, you know, just something solid that is not going to break the bank. Uh, Apple Pencil. So you can choose. Oh, let's see. Hold on. It looks like we've run into a block. It says Apple Pencil. Choose the Apple Pencil that works for you. But it seems like if you don't get a certain iPad, can you not get the Apple Pencil Pro? What's happening here? Let's see. If we go up to a terabyte, no, that can't be. They're not going to do that. for. I don't know. Maybe Apple's still updating their website. I don't know. We'll look at it later. Okay, so if we get in the 512, it's going to be 1099, folks, and that's what it's going to run you for that new color. The engraving is always free. Now let's get to the interesting part. We're going to look at the iPad Pro and see. I'm going to spec out the model that I would be getting, um, and we'll see what it really what it really going to cost. You know what I'm saying? Now my MacBook here, uh, this is also, I'm M1 with everything. I haven't really upgraded since. So I got the M1 Pro, not just the regular M1, the M1 Pro MacBook Pro. 14 inch and I've got the M1 iPad Pro okay with the iPhone 14 so that's kind of the, the world that I'm working in but let's spec out this iPad Pro and possibly thin they always love talking about thinness but it's like okay so what people are going to put it in a case anyway it was going to make it thick as anything anyway sorry I digress so let's hit order now it takes us to the page I love that they updated so quick all right you know we're going 13 inch because it's an iPad Pro uh, wait, so we're already at $12.99. So we're already at $12.99. Guys, don't get the one terabyte 13 inch iPad Air because you can literally get the 13 inch iPad Pro for the exact same price. And you're getting the upgrade of the M4 chip. And we already saw how much of an improvement that is over the M2, which is going to ship with the, with the Air. Um, you're also getting the new display. You're going to want that, folks. So for that same price, just go with that. Uh, we're definitely going with the space black. I'm, I'm so sick of space gray. <laughs> I really hate it. Um, I'm just tired of it. So anyway, you can get up to a two terabyte with this bad boy. So I think we're going to go with the one terabyte. Standard glass or nano textured glass. Oh, my goodness. Oh, wait. Oh, it was already that expensive when you get the terabyte. So when you get the terabyte, this thing jumps from $12.99 all the way to almost $2,000. You're talking $18.99. 
that's a little gross, but you know, two thousand dollars on an iPad is crazy. So if you do the standard glass for only a hundred bucks more, for only a hundred bucks more, you can get the nano texture glass. But here's something that's crazy. Uh, the nano texture glass is only available with the one and two terabyte versions of the iPad Pro. Kind of lame. You know, if you wanted a 512 with nano texture, you can't get that right now on the site. you got to get the one terabyte or two terabyte in order to get that. I think we're going to go with standard glass because there are a lot of nice matte finish screen protectors out there. Um, and if you ever don't need it, like if you're in a very dark environment, I, I want to be able to use that glossy display because there's going to be no glare in the environment. Um, so anyway, uh, let's just go Wi-Fi. Free engraving. So that's going to max out at, uh, you're talking $18.99. Pretty expensive, honestly. $18.99 is, 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 is a, it's a lot for an iPad. But you know what? A lot of people already have an iPad, okay? Most people who are interested in an iPad are not first-generation customers. So uh, sell your old iPad. You know, I got the M1 sitting right here. I would probably get, what, 500 bucks for it. So you're shaving that off. You get it for 1300 bucks at that point. So yeah, that's the iPad Pro in terms of what you're going to be getting if you're on the site right now. If you want to look at those options, you can see it. But overall, guys, now we wait because WWDC is going to show us what Apple truly wants for this iPad. Remember, this iPad that they showed off is still running last year's software, okay? So iPad OS has evolved since then. Hopefully, they were evolving iPad OS with this new M4 iPad in mind, with all the things that it can do in mind. And so uh, we're going to see it unleashed. I'm very excited. I'm excited about what they're doing with Final Cut Pro. I'm excited about what they've shown off with Logic. I'm excited even about Procreate. And I don't even draw like that. But when, when he started twisting the Apple Pencil and flipping it around, and like, that was pretty cool. Makes me want to draw something. It's going to look horrible. But I, I, I'll try. So anyway, uh, I'd love to chat it up with you guys always in the comments. You can chat it up. This stream is getting pretty long. 69 minutes and 53 seconds. But, of course, I want to know. So keep commenting on this video, and I'll continue to chat it up with you guys. Um, I'm also live on X. Thank you guys also for watching on X. This is my first time on X. If you want to keep the conversation going, like, all the time, 24-7, X is the place to be. That's where I'm going to be chatting a lot. Uh, but videos obviously drop right here. So thank you guys so much for watching and hanging out with me for the Apple event. Don't forget to subscribe and all that good stuff on your respective platforms. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.